welcome everyone to another Smite Lore reading that you've released a new chapter today. I'm just gonna need this is taken roughly on patch day. So this is uh around when they released Marty Chorus, the the Manticore King. It's kinda of exciting. Which means new lore, which means we get new stuff to read, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So this is still under the uh, Magic the Gathering. They have released a little bit more. So, it's exciting. All the new stuff. New stuff's always fun. So, so this is called King of the Manticores. This is Chapter 2. The wind shifted. The hunter paused, alert and wary. Above the sky royal, as if on the verge of a storm. Below the jungle stank of fire, but there was no fire to be seen. Only the marks of something large passing through the hunter's territory. In a great hurry, the hunter crept through the trees, following it the scent. Whatever it was, it was bound to be more interesting than the usual run of play. But Marty Chorus was not particularly hungry. Thus, he intended to satiate his curiosity first. Afterwards, he might as well choose to eat whatever or whoever it was, but not until he had his fun. Yet, even as he pursued the intruder, he realized there was something wrong. No, he corrected himself. Not wrong, exactly. Say, rather, just different. As if the world had tilted on its axis, but only for a brief moment, something had changed. But what was that something was, he couldn't say. Nor in truth did he care. Marty Chorus was not, at heart, a philosopher, or even particularly observant, save when he was filling his belly. The world had changed many times since he would come to the jungle. And he was sure it would change many more times hence. He learned as a cub that the only constant was change. One could either accept it or to be driven mad. Besides, however the sky quaked, the jungle remained as it always had. His kingdom was in inviolate, and his subjects, his prey, remained tasty and not too challenging. There were worse things. Even so, he wanted to know the nature of whatever he had entered this territory, and what trouble it might have brought with it. Overhead, thunder rumbled. Marty Chorus paused, one eye on the clouds. Though not divine, he had dealings with divinity, albeit in a distant past. Bad dealings, mostly. Regardless, he knew the sound of gods on the hunt. They were looking for something, or someone. He snorted. Let them run. It made no difference to him, so long as they stayed out of his jungle. But the wind turned again, and the smell of fire grew stronger. He howled softly, sorry, growled softly, excuse me, and pressed on with the hunt. Creeping through the jungle on silent pause. Somewhere up ahead, something heavy sent a tree crashing to the ground. The path widened, became a trail of devastation. Fallen trees, scorched rocks, something or someone was cutting themselves a path through a path through his jungle, and without his permission. Incensed by this insult, Marty Chorus increased his speed. Whoever it was, they'd regret it. He'd make sure of it. This place was his, and had been for centuries. For three turns of the great wheel, if not more, it had, it was hard to recall exactly. He had never been very good with time or its reckoning. He leapt over fallen trees, his anger growing with ever passing moment. It became so fierce, in fact, it nearly cost him his life. His quarry must not must have heard him coming, however, impossible that seemed. A fiery blade swept out, nearly taking Marty nearly taking off Marty Chorus's head. He twists aside, leathery wings flapping to carry him up and away. 
a growled laughter, but despite the close call, it was always more fun when the prey fought back. Close, but not close enough, Regal taunted. He circled overhead as he cir as his opponent moved into the open. A giant one a giant, one with flare hair of flame. That he had why did that seem familiar? No matter. One meal was just, just as good as another. He folded his wings and dove towards the intruder. Marty Chorus crashed into the, the giant as the ladder turned, and they fell into the ground in the tangle. It was like a wrestling with a wildfire. Marty Chorus was thankful his hide was so tough, otherwise he might have been reduced to cinders. As it was, it was uncomfortable being so close, as he started to have doubts that whether he could digest such a creature. They grappled for a moment before the giant managed to fling Marty Chorus away. The great manticore landed lightly on his paws and whirled, sending a flurry of spines arching towards his opponent. The giant met the volley with a slice of his blade, burning the spines to ash before they reached him. They faced one another for a moment, neither making a move. Marty Corus found something about the giant familiar. He never fought the creature before, though he had eaten his share of giants over the centuries. The giant, for his part, returned Marty Corus's appraisal. You are not one of the gods, the giant said finally. Marty Corus choked, almost choked on his laughter. Of course not! I am Marty Corus, the first king of all Manticores! He reared up as so to better display his impressive figure. The giant did not look impressed, but then it was hard to tell with giants. I was not aware Manticores had a king, the giant said after a moment. Marty Chorus snorted. They didn't, but that's why I declared myself one and killed any who argued the point. And this is my kingdom you invaded, giant. Care to explain yourself before I devour you? I think you would find me a poor meal, the giant said, lifting his sword in warning. Unless you like your meat tough. Burnt. Marty Chorus circled the giant, studying him. He radiated power, which was reason enough to be wary. But Marty Chorus had killed and eaten powerful things before. Tell me your name, then, he said. It is only polite, since I have told you mine. Certain of Usflaim. Marty Chorus stopped his circle. Surter, he growled, a name tasting funny to him. Yet the sting of familiarity was there. Suddenly, he recalled where he had heard it before, and he sank to his haunches with a guttural laugh. Yeah, you're the one they got to replace me. The giant looked at him. What? Or maybe not. Maybe we just shared the same fate. For time. It is hard to remember. Marty Chorus knocked on his head with a heavy paw. Being killed over and over again has that effect, I found. Killed? Her sort of hesitated, but Marty Chorus could see that the giant understood what he meant. The gods had their little games, and those games were cruel. You mean, you were a prisoner as well? Sutter continued. Marty Chorus chortled and lashed his tail. Oh yes, in an earlier turn of the wheel. He stretched. They took a dim view of me eating their worshippers. The ones called Olympians caught me and bound me with their magics, made me the prey for their hunts. He could dimly recall that time. What he remembered he didn't like. He wasn't prey. And it had been fair. And it hadn't been fair for them to pretend he was. What he had done that was so wrong, after all. He shook his head. I escaped, though. But everything was crackling apart. It all got put back together. But by then, I was safe in my jungle. And the gods forgot about me. He bared his teeth in a wide smile. 
I don't think they're going to forget about you, though. I will see that they do not. Marty Kuro's clawed idly at the earth. How did you manage it, then? Sutter was silent for a moment. Something has changed. Can you feel it? As if the old chains have lost their strength. Marty Chorus blinked. Oh, one of those, was it? Sir looked at him. One of what? Marty Chorus inspected his claws. A new cycle has begun. The gods must have ended the world again. He sighed. They never learn. Ended the... Sir, when did this happen? Marty Chorus shrugged. It always happens. He drew the circle of the dirt. It is a cycle. Gods grow arrogant. Something happens. The war breaks out. Things fall apart. Sometimes it takes centuries. Sometimes not. You get used to it. Serta stared at him. That is not how it's supposed to happen. Marty Cora shrugged again. I don't care. Whatever the cycle, the jungle remains the same, and I remain its king. That's all that matters to me. But they made you a prisoner, Sorta protested. Morikura snored, snorted. I am not a prisoner now. Now I am a king. What does it matter from what I once was, when I am now something better? If you were the prisoner, you know what I have suffered. Your suffering is not my concern. Marty Curtis hesitated, still curious. What do you intend to do next? Part of him hoped he wouldn't have to kill Surtur. He felt some small kinship with the giant. Perhaps Surtur would prove wiser than the rest of his kind, and simply depart in peace. Flames flared along the length of Surtur's sword. I will punish them for their temerity. Good luck with that. Marty Corsi yawned. He turned away. The conversation was starting to bore him. And as such, since a giant made a flame didn't sound particularly advertising, and it was almost time for his midday nap, he might as well take his leave. I give you safe passage, said Surtur. Leave my jungle, and we'll have no trouble. Wait, Serta called. Marty Kuros paused. paused. He glanced back at the giant. What now? Help me. What? Marty Kuros frowned. What? Help me. Don't you want to make them pay for what they did? Marty Kuros laughed and sat. Revenge doesn't fill my belly. Revenge doesn't keep my territory safe. But it can. It might, Sutter looked up. They will follow me here. They might even find me. He looked at Marty Chorus. They might find you too. And what then? What do you think will happen, O oh King of the Manticores? Marty Chorus growled softly. He knew. They would break him and cage him. The way they had in the past. Just because he had eaten a few mortals. As if that were a crime. Who hadn't eaten a mortal or two? All the more reason for you to leave, giant. Get out of my jungle. And quickly, if you please. Surtur shook his head. No. Marty Kuros snarled, I'll make you leave. And that will hasten only our doom. Sort of pause. I can beat them, but not alone. Once I had an army, I must have one again. Will you join me? Serve. Oh, sorry. Will you join me? I got ahead of myself here. 
Marty Corris stared at him for a moment, and then laughed uproariously. What a ridiculous notion. Do you do not hear me call myself a king? Kings do not serve. And I am a king as well, Serta said heavily. He hesitated. But I understand. Once in a time I can barely recall, I had enemy, allies, warriors, who fought beside me against the gods. I do not know where those allies are now, and even if they still exist, he extended his hand, I need new allies, strong ones. Marty Chorus hesitated. The idea was tempting, despite what he had said. The thought of sharpening his claws on gods was a pleasant one. Sometimes in the dark of the night, he found himself dreaming of revenge against those who humbled him so long ago. Gods like Zeus and Apollo, who made sport out of destroying Mar Marty Corius's subjects. Perhaps Serta was right. Perhaps it was time that the gods learned the errors of their ways. I am very strong, he said finally. But even if I were to get all the manticores in the jungles to aid you, it would still not be enough. The gods are many, and we are few. Sort of frowned. There must be others like us who bear gods of enmity. Morty Chorus, only who, who only rarely considered other beings as anything save prey, grunted. There were others, of course. Being who were perhaps as mighty and resplendent as himself. Though he had never been s such out loud, I might know of some. Yes, here in the jungle and elsewhere. Though I have never spoken to them. Eaten plenty of them, yes. But never spoken to them. And there are other monsters, of course. Sir paused. Monsters? Marty Chorus snorted. Weaklings, but numerous. Harpies. Chimeras, satyrs. If you want an army, you could do worse than start there. He flexed his wings. I'm sure I could round them up for you if you'd like. I am a king, after all. Surter smiled. Yes, bring me this army. Bring me any who will come. It is time the gods learn the errors of their ways, and it's the monsters who will teach them. Oh, it's getting intense already. This is only the second chapter, and it's already starting to get intense with Surtur. And... Ooh. They said it was going to be the year of the monsters. They weren't kidding. Well, I guess we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Let me know what you guys think. I'm curious. Until then, take it easy, everybody. Enjoy your day. We'll catch you on the next one, guys.